going to look to the outside here. We tried that last lap at the moment. We're going to look at the inside. Oh, look at that. Oh, my. This guy right here. This is Kevin Astra. Isn't he pretty? Isn't he lovely? Let's give him a little, little chin scratch there. Sorry, Maurice, mate. I do like you still. You're just not a racing driver yet. Now, you guys might not have heard of Kevin Astra because he isn't a Formula One driver, which is OK. I understand. But our good mate Kev is probably one of the best GT drivers in the world. He's raced for Porsche for the last, like, what does Wikipedia say? Ah, oh, yes, 50 million years. And has recently been called up to the hypercar program. So, well done, Kev. I'm proud of you, mate. But the reason we're talking about him today is because of one circuit, one race, and that is the Nürburgring 24 hours. Specifically the 2021 and 24, where him and Manti Racing in the Porsche started P11, and yet after only two laps found themselves in the lead. Now, luckily for all us as racing fans, there is footage of this, which we're gonna sit down and watch today <laughs> and try and just deconstruct how the hell Kevin made this happen. If you wanna watch the video we're looking at today without me talking over it, which I you know, very much appreciate, you can find that down below in the description. But yeah, I've been looking forward to doing this video for a while, so let's just let's just get straight into it. Right, so this video starts fairly quickly. Uh, we've just had the green flag drop, so we're gonna go straight into it, and we're already fighting position down the T1 on board then with the Manti Porsche. We've got the 23 passed on the inside there, going down the T1 at the Nürburgring GP circuit. Very, very tight corner, then goes into a tight left straight away, so getting a good gap here is essential for getting through. The Merc there on the right, Audi on the left. We're going to go try the inside straight away. And you see how fighty these guys are. This is a 24-hour race we're at the start of here, but you wouldn't believe it from the way these guys drive. Already looking to the inside. We've got the Merc hovering around the inside line here. Can't really go around the outside here, but here it's about defending as well. We've got cars behind us. There's a Merc still on the inside, which is slow. And we've got by him up into P10 already. So two places by the time we've got onto the GP circuit. Down to the hairpin once again now. You can see wide there, very aggressive straight away there, up to P9. So we're already well inside the top 10, and we've not even got onto the Nordschleife yet, which I think is insane. A really good place to get overtakes done on this opening few laps because of how the um, other cars are warming up. And Kevin, who's driven this car a lot, you can tell just how confident he is. It's, it's awesome to see. Oh, on the inside, a little bit of contact almost there with the, uh, the Audi on the, on the right-hand side. A lot of respect there. And even though this is a pretty aggressive start, you can see there is where maybe in a sprint race you'd go for the move. Here they're a little bit more cautious, just putting out of the gap in case maybe maybe there's some sort of instant. Anyway, coming up on the, to the far chicane. Now, really fun corner, this. Good place to get the overspeed, but it's hard to get an overtake done here because the inside has a lot of camber on. You can see there having to tuck in behind the Audi in front. We're going to go for a move here. Just we come onto the uh, Sabine Switch curve. This is the uh, number two, I think. Very nice through there. Cool. So we're onto the Nordschleife proper now. This is where it gets intense. And if you're, and you're not familiar with this circuit, well, you should be, uh, you can see just how it changes compared to the GP circuit. We've also got a little bit of rain on the windscreen there as well to contend with. So not a completely dry race. You might see rain later on in the lap. We are on slick compound tyres. And when you're on slick tyres and it starts raining, even a little bit, you want to try and just push the car as hard as possible because the moment you start losing those heat um, from slowing down, from, from being cautious in the wet, the moment uh, that's when the tyres start falling away from you. So be careful there. So we're now alongside the Audi. Not much of a gap here putting into it anyway, though. Just about enough room for us there. Oh, my God. Coming up to the Flugplatz. The Audi gives us a place there, I think, just out of uh, out of fear. And look at the overspeed we've got in the Lamborghini here. We're going to use that to get alongside. Is he going to see us? He does just about really nice through there. So two places, you can see the rain on the windscreen there and it's starting to come down heavier and heavier. But for Kevin and for all the rest of the guys, it's about keeping it flat. Now it's a little bit wetter here, you can see. Coming onto a wet part of the circuit, taking the outside line there where there isn't any rubber to try and have the most grip possible. And breaking off line here. Rain coming down fairly hard. You can see in front everyone's struggling, just about trying to get the car in. Playing with the throttle between traction control and ABS. These cars do have both and the drivers will be leaning on them. And now imagine this, you're plummeting downhill in the wet on slick tyres and it's just a matter, you, know, you have no idea what this track's going to be like. You have no idea, but these guys are all throwing it in there straight away. It's so, so cool to see on the kerbs there. You see the pace somewhat slowed now. You, can, you can't push the car this much, even, even on this, this circuit. No matter how hard you push the tyres, you're not going to keep the heat in it now. So using the kerbs there, see, to pull the car around. A lot of people say to stay off the kerbs, but if you can get hooked on the kerb for the corner, it's really beneficial in the wet conditions here. Slow car on the left. 
Winter's looking for any space at the moment to try and get past the Lamborghini. We're going to do it using the outside there. Really slowing up now. No one knows what sort of track conditions we're on, but we're just making places at every opportunity here. It's so awesome to see the confidence in this car. Fellow Porsche in front now. Going to look to the outside. There's going to be grip rounds here as well. Just driving all the way to the, the outside. Wall of death. Merc on the inside too. Almost gets two of them there. Just shows the difference in grip when you're on the off the dry line in the wet. You want to try and avoid anywhere rubber has been pushed into the tarmac in the wet conditions because the car has become slidey. The track now starting to clean up again. And this is just the magic of a Norwich life. A big lunge on the seven car there. Nearly made that work. Nearly made that work. That was an insane, insane effort. I don't think the Mercs saw it coming. And again, I think in a sprint race, you would have made that move. But there, I think, just extra putting out the back of it to make sure um, the car isn't damaged at all. But yeah, the magic of this race is some parts of the circuit are wet. Some parts are just completely dry. And having to negotiate that and remember those bits so when you go around next time is uh, one of the reasons why this track is one of the best in the world, in my opinion. So right now you can see where we are on circuit. We're just trying to reel the cars in in front. Now we're going uphill now. This is completely flat out all the way up here. See Kevin there taking a slightly different line to the guys in front. There's a little bit of water down. You can see the spray from the cars in front. Oh my God. That was a, sh it didn't look like a huge moment, but that was a huge moment. It's left hand here, just turning in. The rear of the car tries to escape. Oh my God, that's scary. I knew like 130 mile an hour at that corner there. That's insane. Backing off a bit now, wiper comes on, so you know it's getting a little bit serious. And this is where it's all about track knowledge. And uh, Esther has driven here a lot over the course of his career. So he knows where he's going at this point. And, and this is not to discredit the, the guys around him and the cars around him. But every driver in one of his GT cars is a top level pro GT driver, which just shows you how impressive this driver is here from, uh, from Kevin Esther. We're out to the carousel for the first time now. The track looks like it's not wet here. Probably just a bit greasy at this point. So we've got... Uh, Mercedes Porsche BMW in front of us as well and this back half of the circuit here is one of my favorite bits of racetrack in the world but it's very very difficult to pass it it's very narrow definitely one line only I say that but the sevens wide there oh Kevin looks at it but I think <laughs> better just to look there now we come through uh, Whipperman one of the only parts of the circuit I know the actual name of and again, through here, really hard to pass. Looking around the outside here, but the road naturally puts the car on the outside there. So if you go for a move, you're going to get pushed out wide. No way. No way we go around the outside here. I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Let's just watch that again. So the Merc in front is getting bunched up here by the cars, but he has nowhere to go. So he's already so far over to the left that he doesn't have the... Uh, the space or time just to move over to the right here, whereas Estra has already positioned his car there in case this happens. So he sees this coming, he sees the brake lights coming on, goes, okay, I'm gonna go in the gap. And at this point, he's made the pass because there's still grip out here and these guys are all slow on the inside line. You can see him all just desperately fighting for that same bit of grip that doesn't really exist. Whereas Estra, I think, where the track's a little bit greasy, just knows there's gonna be grip out here. So just fires it around the outside. So nice. Can't quite get the move done there because it's going to be slip on the inside. You're going to just, uh, lock up the brakes, probably go into the car there. So just keeps it there for now. But really nice, really nice move there. Now behind a fellow Porsche. This section of racetrack is just one of the best sections of the racetrack in the world. Look at this. It's like a roller coaster. And if that's not enough, you get jumping. Listen. Off the ground, back down again. 24 hours they're going over that jump. Amazing. They're losing a little bit of time to the car in front through there. You see the car all over the place. Just trying to find that traction there as you go up the, the elevation. The car rises off the floor. And for a moment, you're on two wheels until the car comes back down again. It's an insane piece of circuit. Look how much more speed we're carrying through this part of the course. We're so much more confident in our car than the guy ahead of us. Second carousel now. Now, I'm going to give you what I assume is going to be a headphone warning now. We're about to go onto the back straight. And this thing rees on the back straight. I forget how long this straight is, but I'm sure Joey can flash it up on screen somewhere. But you're flat out the entire way down there using the draft of the car in front. And we're close enough now to pick up the slipstream. So we're going to pull slowly onto the back of the car in front. He's got the exact same machinery as us. So you're going to see the difference there using the toe. And we should get the overspeed to get by and see what happens. Then closer, closer, almost close enough to reach out and touch that rear wing now. Guy in front's not got the toe, which is good for us. 
using the side draft as well. Back through we go. Another place gain. Nice and easy one, that one. And now we're going to focus on the two cars ahead of us. I think we're up into P3 now. I have no idea where we are. Joey, I think, has been keeping a better tally of this than I have. But already on the first lap, imagine being on the pit wall and seeing this car go by in P3 and be like, what the f <laughs> What the heck? That's, 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 that's how I would feel in the situation. But anyway, lap two. Imagine how fired up you must feel right now inside the cockpit of this car in your Karen Estra. You're thinking, I, I have own this place this is my house and he's just schooling everyone such an impressive drive and now we've got two bmws to get by these the m6s were quick around here when they were in good trim where we're gonna get by gp circuit is an easier place to pass here it's a bit wider the, the curbs are a bit more forgiving you can send it there's a room to go off here you can see you've got these little uh, astro strips that you don't have on the actual nordschleifer but you see there this is a really common tactic all over the world as a, as a driver. So you see here, just pulling slightly offline. And the, the reason for that is to get into this mirror. Be like, hi, look at me, look at me. Don't look where you're about to break. This is a really common tactic, get people to over break the corner a bit. And looks like it actually kind of did there. Really like apex there from the BMW. So it kind of succeeded that little attempt there. Just to gain a couple more attempts to get that a little bit closer. And the thing is, if you're any driver here at a Nürburgring and you see the Manti Porsche behind you, you know that he's coming for you and you know there's going to be an attempt made for an overtake soon. I love the chicane so much. It's so fast. You'll be closed right up on the M6 in front, but nowhere really to make the move. But now, but now back on to the Nordschleifer. Every time I come onto this, this part of circuit, it's like, right, OK, business starts now. You know, this is where you've got to focus. And you've got to focus for like six, seven minutes. It's insane. So we know already to expect a wet part of the circuit. We don't know how much the rain has moved since then. We've already driven past that circuit. The rain, of course, moves over the track. So maybe there'll be a bit more of a, of a damp course coming up. But we aren't going to be the one that finds that out. It's going to be the person leading. They're going to go into this completely blind. And we have the, I guess, the advantage of being behind and seeing where that wet weather is just a moment before the guy in first does. Get up through the gears. Coming up to the food plats. No lift over there. Just as we come to the exit, we start to lift off. A bit more competent through there. Now we've got the overspeed going down the hill. What's this M6 like in a straight line, though? It's pretty quick. Even, even with the advantage we got running off the corner there, the M6 still managing to hold the gap. We're now getting into that draft. But we go on to the wet part of the circuit now. So now it's all about confidence. Estra taking the outside line for a bit more speed in the corner. Now looking to the outside. Coming down hill, trying to use that... That, dry, that wet line out there, not really working as well this time. Oh, a little bit of correction there. We've lost ground on the car in front. So easy to do that there. Plummeting down the hill. Now, we also have the fact that about 130 cars have now gone through this part of circuit since we were last there. So it's a little bit of a dry line there. A bit quicker than last lap, but through here you can see really, really wet. There's no aero here, which is why you have to really slow to a crawl in these cars. You're relying just on the tyre and on the suspension. And slick tyres on a wet circuit, I don't have to tell you, they're pretty awful. It's like driving on ice. A little quick wave to the Rebel Tree, hello, mate. And again, trying alternative lines. The leader there in front actually has bunched us all up now because he's having to discover this circuit for the first time. And we're just following in his wheel tracks. We're going to look to the outside here. We tried that last lap of the moment. We're going to look to the inside. Oh, look at that. Oh, my. We're, OK, we're, we're doing that again. That was. Oh, it's the most replays. That was gorgeous. So. Let's, let's talk that through in maybe a bit slower motion because that was all happening very quickly. So the BMW is watching his mirrors right now. He knows we're about to try and dip to the inside because we've taken a differing line coming into this left-hander. The BMW sees this now and goes to defend. As he goes to defend, we go the other way. We fake him out. The BMW's defended the wrong place and we know it's faster on the outside from the last set where we just overtook the Merc. So... Round we go, and the BMW's on the brakes. We just about managed vo avoiding hitting him. We roll the car in. We're past this point. The BMW is still there on the inside, but there's no grip there. He can't fight back. We can just roll it around the outside. Thank you very much, mate, for the position. Up into P2. What a move. Once more again at full speed, I think. Just look at this. Oh, it's filthy. It's so good. Uh, I, I love 
good racecraft. It's one of my favourite things. It's so good to see. And now, of course, there's the leader. We are P2. We've gone from P11 to P2 in a lap and a half at an Orchlife, and now we're chasing down the leader. That's insane. You can see how difficult it is to pass here, but Kevin's doing it anyway. And already, look, we're right on the back of him. The pace difference is insane. The confidence we have in this Porsche is off the scale. Still getting spits of rain on the on the windscreen there, but I can tell you from experience, it's it always looks worse in the cockpit than it is on circuit. It always looks a lot worse in the cockpit because of the speed you're going. You, you hit the water drops and they kind of explode and go everywhere. Um, but if you're a pro, it doesn't phase you. It, it phased me when I first did it, 100%. I just like listening to the noise of this thing. There's nothing like a boxer Porsche engine. Nothing like it. Bit of diff wine in there for good measure. Or tran probably transmission, I don't know, one or two. So this road car in front, this BMW, is fast. You know, we are just about hanging with it at the moment, but now we're going to get into sort of Kevin's part of the circuit. Right, so out of the carousel now, and we're now in Porsche hunting grounds. This is where this car is quick. I think maybe it being sort of mid-engine helps it out a fair bit through here. That's being able just to rotate from side to side a bit easier. Just a bit more agile through this last section. And you see, we're already on the back of this M6. And you couldn't, you couldn't have two more different cars, I think, fighting each other right now. Actually, the, the M6 in front is looking fairly quick, although we're a bit more aggressive on the curb. We gain right up now. And on the brakes, look how much confident we, more confident we are on the brakes. We can really gain that time back. And now right into the back of the car in front. Can you imagine being the road car in front, looking in your mirrors and going, didn't this guy start a length? Why is he here? Over the jump again. Wow. But faster than last time. We're pushing now. We want this place. When you're not following someone closely through here, it's a lot easier just to push the car more. If you're following someone really closely, then there's always that little bit of, well, there's a little bit of aero wash in this car. There's a little bit of, I don't know what the guy's going to do. But on your own like this, it's it's awesome. And also a bit of rain now coming into this part of the, of the course. The BMW in front slows right down. And this is right exactly where we want to be here, going onto the back straight. You don't want to be with the BMW, you're going to be giving a big fat slipstream to the guy behind. And we're just waiting now, waiting for our chance to pounce. So the BMW does get a bit of a better run onto the straight, immediately goes over to the right-hand side of the course to try and break the toe, and again to the left. We're getting a little bit of rain as well here, but that's not going to phase either of these drivers. We are pedal to the metal, flat out now. They're going to start seeing us slowly pull onto the back of the car in front. Not quite as close as we want to be, though, for a move. Still slowly, slowly pulling in. Come on, little Porsche. Kevin's there with his foot right to the floor right now. And we're going to break just a little bit later. Oh, my God, the commitment on the brakes there. Just touching the wet part of the circuit there as we break down into that. One of the heaviest braking zones on the course. And now we're right up behind the BMW. We're nearly past. We go on to lap three now, but I still count it as two laps. If we can get it done soon, we're going down now to the hairpin. BMW's defensive. He knows it's coming. We're going to go outside. Super brave move there. We're going to get cut off by the BMW big time. Is there a way through? We're looking. We're looking. Not quite there. Not quite there. So more interesting now, you might notice in front, we've got a little bit of traffic coming into play as well. For those who don't know, the N24 has an entry list of usually about 130, 140 cars, of which the GT3s are the fastest. But there are some very, very slow cars out there as well. Coming out of the corners, you can really see the, the torque of this BMW in front just, just heaves itself out of the corners. We can't quite match it on a corner exit with the uh, with the Porsche but it's getting wetter and we've got some flags out double yellow flags that means someone's crashed somewhere that means you have to go to 120 kph and then to the code 60 which means 60 kph so someone's ruined it here but look how much time we were able to pull back just getting to that code 60 right to the limit there you have to maximize everything oh mate car already stopped imagine 24 hour race and stopping that soon in we back now, we can go back to racing speed, and that would let the tyres cool down a little bit as well. Not a lot, but a little bit. And given we're going onto a part of the circuit now, it's a little bit damp, that might just make the difference. Really nice there for the fast right, we've really gained in there. 
Estros is able to take more speed through there than anyone it seems. Carries an extra couple of Ks through there. That just translates to this, being able to get into the toe. And now we're pulling hard on the BMW in front. We're coming onto that greasy part of the circuit now, where Estros has been really good in the last couple of laps. We're looking around the outside. Look how much closer we are now. Coming up around the outside here. Now the BMW is driving down the middle of the road. He's entitled to do that. Nice defensive driving there from the BMW, but I think we smell blood in the water now. We're right onto the back of the M6. Coming downhill now. Full commitment down here. We're just on the dry line, hoping the car sticks flat to the floor. A little bit of a lift down the bottom now. Easy up the top because a bit of a slide here during the compression. We've seen it on previous laps. Using the curb on the inside to settle the car. But the BMW in front now really struggling for grip. And we're all over the back of him now. All over the back. Going to take a different line here to try and get a better run out of the corner. Oh, look at that. Fantastic run. BMW hits traction control. And through we go. Up into the lead of the race. The BMW is still there, though, on the left-hand side. Come on, camera. Stay with us. Kevin's going to keep it. An extra there showing as we pass the blessed Dacia Logan. Rest in peace, my guy. But Kevin Estra there showing how you can go from P11 to P1 in two and a half laps at the Nürburgring. That is insane to me. It really is. I hope you guys enjoy watching that. I love watching stuff like this. I don't do the React style content too often because I, I think it, I don't know, it can be a bit lazy. But when it's stuff like this, I just love getting involved and being part of this experience. And hopefully you guys do too. As I said at the start of the video, a link to this video without me just rambling over it will be down below in the description. Go check it out. It's an awesome watch. Just whack it on your TV, get a drink. It's just great. Sit down and watch. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd very much appreciate you hitting that like button. You can subscribe as well if you like, of course. And as always, a massive thank you to the channel members and patrons who help keep this channel alive. There they are. They're all lovely and beautiful. Thank you so much for your support. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day. I'll see you all next time.